So let's add the functionality of these buttons. First, we'll create three methods. First one will be add row, delete row, and show information. Let's set these methods up in their particular buttons. So add row will go here on the input field button. So we'll say on press is equal to this dot add row and we'll pass in the new contact state to it. So as you may remember, we created this new contact state earlier over here. However, this state is not getting updated anywhere. It should get updated every time the user types in the input field. So for that, let's do on change text is equal to pass in the data entered by the user and update it. This dot set state new contact. Next, let's add the add row button. So that will go here and say on press is equal to this dot add row. And let's pass in the data. We'll also put in the data here. And delete row will go on the delete button, which is on press is equal to this dot delete row. However, the delete row needs certain other values which is section ID, row ID, row map, and data. The first three values are required as a part of the native base props to delete the row from the list. And this data that we're passing is so that we can delete the row in our Firebase database. And we need to make sure we pass these three values from here. So this has to come into a bracket and it has to be sec ID, row ID, and row map so now when the user adds something here and clicks on the add button we want it to get added to our firebase database so let's go ahead and do that here in the add row method we can get a key of a firebase database node which is we'll say our key is equal to firebase dot database dot ref and we'll try and store all our contacts under the contacts node we'll say dot push dot key this gets us basically a new ID for that particular node. Next, we'll say firebase.database.ref contacts. Go inside that child and put in the key that we just created here. And then we set the value of the particular contact there. So we'll say set name of the contact and we'll pass in the data that we're getting here. So now when you click on add, it should go into our Firebase database. Let's open up our Firebase console. Let's add a name. And when you click on the plus button, we see that the contact is added here. So even though the contact is getting added to our database, it's not getting updated in the list here. So let's add the code for that now. Come here to the top and create a method called component did mount. And inside that we'll add a listener called child added for Firebase to listen for any changes to the contacts node. Since we won't have access to this inside the Firebase method, we have to save that into another variable, which we've just called that for convenience. So say firebase.database.ref, go into the contacts node, dot on, add the child added method, function data, Next, let's store the current list view data into a variable. So using the spread operator, we'll pass all of that data into a new data variable. And then we'll push in the data that we received from the server. And update the state of the list view data. So we added a listener child added to our node contacts. We stored the data that already exists from the list view data into variable new data. The data that we received once a element is added to our contacts node, that data we added to the new data array that we created. 
and then we just updated the state for list view data with this new data array. Now before we test this out, let's get rid of this hard coded data here. Also coming here at the bottom, add a prop to the list called enable empty sections so that when the list is empty, it can be displayed, otherwise it will give an error. Lastly, what we need to do is, we are only displaying data, but now since we'll be getting an object from our database, let's display the value. So it'll be data.val.name and save that out. And there we can see data from our database is showing up. Let's try and add another name. As you see, when I press the plus button, it immediately shows up over here. And you can cross check it in our Firebase database. It gets updated here as well. The last thing we need to do is we need to add the delete row method. So coming here, we'll use the async and await methods of ES6. So let's make delete row an async method. Fasten the properties that it needs. So we need section ID, row ID, row map, and data. As you may see, we provide these properties here already to the particular button. Coming here, we'll run await firebase dot database dot ref on the contacts node plus the data dot key and set that to null. What we're doing is we're finding this particular key and deleting it by setting it to null. What a wait does is it waits till this particular asynchronous request is complete and only then runs the rest of the code. So what we need to do is we've deleted our data in our Firebase database by running this command, but we need to also delete it here in our list. So to do that, we'll do row map pass in the section ID and the row ID Make sure they're in back ticks, and then we'll call dot props dot close row. This is a method provided to us by native base. It helps us delete the particular row by providing the section ID and row ID. Next, we'll create a variable called new data like we did in add row and store the current list items. Then what we'll do is we'll use dot splice to delete the particular row data by providing it the row ID and a value of one, which means delete that particular ID. And then we'll set the state of the list view data. Let's save that out. Just make sure that this contacts has a forward slash to it so that it is going inside the contacts node and finding the particular key. Now let's try and test this out. Let's delete Varun and see. And there we can see that Varun has got deleted. Not only is it deleted from here, it's deleted from our particular database as well. So that's about it. We managed to create a simple app using list views in which we can add users, we can delete users. And the last thing that we can do is also display some information about them. I'd like you guys to try that out yourself. It's very easy. You can display whatever information you want. I hope you guys like this video and please like and subscribe.